Shalom Rastafari. That's such a, I don't think I spelled that right. I made a typo. Ethiopian cross. Right? I want to use the Ethiopian cross as an example. And this is the reason for the season Pesach, Passover. Now we're in the days of unleavened bread. Now there's a couple of... um. A couple of vids that we have not um, uploaded as of yet. Right? A couple of vids that we haven't um, uploaded to the channel as of yet. Just teaching on some of the aspects of um, Passover. But no doubt, ones have seen a few of the videos that we have uploaded. And there's something that I think we are, on a certain level, we are missing. Right? something that we are missing, that we're failing to grasp, or at least some of us are failing to grasp. In fact, there's a two or three kind of things I want to touch on because of some of the, some of the, um, some of the situations, or even one can say situations, but let's just really overstand. Let's be mature in this knowledge. I mean, this is so very important. This this holy day is so this holy time and, and, and the holy mind is so very important. I was gonna say that discipleship is not for everyone because Christ even says ones have to count the course. I mean it's so it's a it's a nice thing to say, Yeah, I wanna be a disciple, right? But um have we taken into consideration the example of the disciples, right? I was thinking about this that there's like three choices. There's the, let, let's just deal with the, 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 the worst up front. There's the, the Judas Iscariot, Askrotawi, the, um, the, 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 the betrayer. There is um, uh, Peter, the hard-headed, Petros Romanus, not, but, but Simon um, Petros, Peter Kepha, who was the hard-headed. And then we have... Uh, Johannes, we have John, and here's John right here. Here's John, and the scriptures pictures John, right, according to type, as leaning on the master's bosom, right, of leaning on the master's bosom. And it was that closeness, right, John the beloved. Now, John, Johannes means the grace of Yah, or the grace of Jah. That's what the name Johannes means. Now, what we wanted to touch on right here, and what would... I would like to be like a three-parter, right? The first is on the cross, right? Let's look at the cross. Okay, I, that's why I had the typo. I had a QN mistaken the the type right there. Let's look, let's look at, um, okay, now this is crosses for sale and all of that, which is it's all right on that level right there. But let's get into the real meaning of the cross. Cause a lot of ones say, oh, you don't know the meaning of the cross. So the cross was just a symbol. One thing about the Ethiopian, the ancient church, that we have to consider and keep in mind. Let's move this out right here. That the cross as symbol, if you can see some of these crosses right here, never pictured in the traditional Ethiopian crosses that we can see from ancient. Never pictured um, Yeshua, Yesu, still on the cross. That is a, a modern, careless Ethiopian um, invention that has come in from its association with the world, right, with the Gentile world system that you see now. They have certain Ethiopian crosses, processional crosses, like the Roman Catholics, right, which still has Yeshua. They're suspending belief. They're keeping Christ hanging on the cross. Let's touch on this one right here. This is a beautiful one. We can use this for the cross teaching right here. We need to understand what the what the real meaning of the cross is, right? What's the what's the meaning of the cross? And it's something that I've come across <laughs> interesting, come across come across in in some of the Gnostic uh scriptures. Now, it's 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 a known fact that of the of the nine saints, that the nine saints, that they were Gnostics, right? They were Awaki. They were Noahs. Now, the Gnostics have gotten a bad name and since um, Alex the Crowley and his OTO and a lot of, a lot of uh, spiritual confusion has crept in. So a lot of folks 
When they think of the Gnostics, they only go back to the Gentile white Western world's infiltration and perversion of the true Gnosis, but don't go back to our Ethiopic root. And here we want to go back to the root, and we're going to refer to um, Potomi's version of the Gnostic myth right here, and this is from the Gnostic scriptures. Let's show this. Bobby Hemet goes into something very good on that as well. This is the book right here. So here's a well-worn copy of it, right? a well-worn copy of it. And we're going to touch on this area right here from a chapter from a chapter called um, The Allegories of the Inner Boundary, right? The inner boundary, the boundary of our soul. That means receiving the true teaching should have a resonance effect in our soul. Otherwise, we are just, you know, hearing, you know, becoming forgetful hearers of the word. And because some of the... Mm, ministry um, encounters that we are encountering among certain ones, this is why we've, we like Hawadi Apollo said that we, we, we fear, right? We fear. Let's, let's qualify this fear, right? Let's qualify this fear. So let's bring the scriptures near and let's see what Hawadi Apollo says right here, right? In uh, Corinthians, Right, in Corinthians, right, in Corinthians uh, chapter, let's bring up this chapter right here. Okay, it's chapter 11, which is bankruptcy, right, in the world, chapter 11 is bankruptcy. But 2 Corinthians chapter 11, it speaks of the godly jealousy. He says, would to God ye could bear with me a little of my folly, and indeed bear with me, for I am jealous or zealous, and not I, you know, send over you with a godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband. Now, that one husband is Moshiach. That one husband is Christos. Right? That one husband is the Son of God, the Bain High Elohim, our Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. So the opposite of a chaste virgin is, is like Babylon is a whore. So, so let, let's understand these spiritual types because it's easy for one to point in the flesh, but we're dealing with the spiritual right here. This is the true spirituality of his majesty. But he says in verse 3, But I fear at least by any means, as the serpent, even the serpent has adopted the any means, by any means necessary, right? The serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. So your mind. Your minds, right? Your hearts and your minds. But here it says your minds, which is the intellectual part of your soul, right? But also touching on the feelings and emotions should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christos, the simplicity that's in Moshiach. So here we want to touch on the allegories of the inner boundary and, and the mystery of the true cross, so we have this, we have the outer cross, right, which is actually the tree, right? We have that tree. It says Yeshua was hung on a tree. But then what does the cross signify in the innermost of the inner or in the inner sense, in its true spiritual sense? This is why we chose the Ethiopian crosses because we noticed that it's only the ancient Ethiopian crosses that don't have um, Yeshua, figure of Jesus, still hanging on it, right? And in the Gnostics, it says that some of them continue to keep him hanging in that sense. That's like suspending belief. We keep him hanging. Now, we're passing over in this Passover, and I hope and pray that um, we and, and many of ye um, pass over these little things in order to recognize the real course of discipleship and why Yeshua HaMoshiach says that we must carry our cross. So let me just get right into this, and this might be a first part of a, of a two or three, uh, at least a first part right here on the cross and the real meaning, right, the inner meaning of the cross. I found this to be interesting in Potomi's version of the Gnostic mythos or mystia. It says, furthermore, as for the boundary, which they call by many names, whether it's the tree, whether it's the cross, 
right, they declare that it has two activities. The cross has two activities, one that stabilizes and the other that divides. Now, it's very, very interesting because the yachat, when we talk about the unleavened bread, right, in the Passover Seder, there are like three um, matzot, right, matzot, three matzot or the kita, right, three um, um, unleavened pieces of bread, right, and it's the center one that is broken as, as a symbol of the Moshiach, but also coming from that type of Isaac. Remember Isaac who, who was offered up, right? But Yahweh Yireh, Jehovah Jireh, he provided a ram as that substitute. Just like Yeshua HaMoshiach, he is our substitute as well. If, that's if we will receive it. So one stabilizes, the other divides. So the cross, the Meskel, has these two functions, right? One that stabilizes and the other that divides. In stabilizing and establishing, it is the cross, right? In stabilizing, right? So when we receive the true cross of Christ, there is to be received within the innermost of the inner, within our hearts and our minds, a stabilization and an establishing. And therefore, that is the cross, the mezcal. In dividing and bounding, it's also a boundary, right? It's also a boundary. And they say that the Savior, he disclosed its activities in the following words, that Yeshua HaMoshiach, he disclosed its activities, right, in these following words. So let's touch on this right here. In Matthew in Matthew chapter 10, verse 38, and Luke chapter 14, verse 27, he disclosed his stabilizing activity when he said, that which does not lift up its cross, or, or one who does not lift up their cross cannot follow me. This is why we said from the beginning that discipleship, no matter how nice it might sound, is not for everyone because you have to count the cost. Right? And if you even think the cost is too difficult and you still want to ask him for the strength, you know what I'm saying? And, and the humble to that influence, the good influence, you know what I'm saying? But you have to crucify your ego and your shego, right? This is what we're facing right now among many brothers and sisters and I and I, is these egos and shegos, right? It's like the old life, the old self, and, and, and trying to abort the new self right, the, the new man, that which or who does, does not lift up their cross cannot follow me and be my disciple. So if we do not lift up the cross, right, we cannot follow him and be his disciple. So if we claim to be doing works or justifying ourselves by our works, that is only in the vanity, right, and the insanity of I and I mind. So here we have, we're going to put the cross right here, right? There we go. So remember, remember the example and, and, and remind me to get into it. But the Holy Spirit teach you all things, will show you the example of either you are uh, Askarotawi, uh, uh, Judas Iscariot, right, who, who betrayed for, for silver and gold, for worldly, for the worldly standard, or you are a Petros, a Petros, a hard-headed, but still one who, 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 if you can be hard-headed about his way and not your own way. This is, this is where Peter Kafer had to kind of go through that um, conversion process. Or like Johannes, where you rest on his breast, right? You rest on his chest. You rest on, on his strength and not your own, Right? And in Matthew chapter 10, verse 21, he says, lift up the cross. We've got to lift up the cross and follow me. He don't say just come follow me. No, lift up the cross. So folks are following Yeshua, but they have not lifted up the cross, right? They have not even overstood the cross. And hopefully in this series, one would better be able to understand the cross and its activities. But he disclosed its bounding activity when he said, 
I have not come to bring peace. He did not come to bring shalom, but a sword. And that sword is the word of truth. And it says, curse be he who draw back his sword from blood. So you may be offended, you understand, but be reproved. Stay tuned for the next part of this is Wendem Yadom.